course, the great, the great gift of the church is the Eucharist. Because in the Eucharist, that Paschal mystery is happening at every Mass. That love for Jesus, for each one of us personally, happens at every Mass. It didn't just happen 2,000 years ago on Calvary. It did happen 2,000 years ago on Calvary. But that is sacramentally extended and repeated for us. And I love what the fathers of the church say. Because it is incarnation. It is incarnate, in flesh, in meat. It is in the world. Jesus, the Logos, the second person of the Trinity, being incarnate into the world sacramentally under the appearance of bread and wine for each one of us personally, we receive him and even our body receives his body and his blood. In the Eucharist, his body, his blood is being not assimilated, but absorbed into not just our spirit, not just our soul, but our flesh. The same flesh, dear heart, that went to Chick-fil-A and got a great salad today. At a great price, I might add. Right? It's a good price. It's a good price. It's, it's a good meal. It's a healthy meal. So, wow. And the Paschal mystery, the dying and the rising, the incarnation, the dying, the rising of Jesus is there in every Eucharist for us. What a gift. What a gift. Now, we receive him constantly through the power of the Spirit. We receive him in word. We receive him in one another. But that gift of the Eucharist is so powerful. So powerful. And it's, it's a specific gift of Catholic, Orthodox, Eastern Christianity that the modern American heresy has forgotten. Oh, we'll only have the Lord's Supper once a quarter. So, so modern American Christianity has kind of deviated, and it's one of the gifts that we Catholics and high church or liturgical church Christians have to give to the other churches. Now, what's the gift that we can get from them? It's a gift we already have, but we don't use very well. A gift of enthusiasm. One of the things I loved watching the Pope today and watching the ceremonies from Rio, as a matter of fact, it was almost too worldly for me. You know that, what, you know that South American sound? You know, what, what was the 60s songs they used to have? Bye, bye. What was that? Sergio Mendez. I mean, I mean, it was like, it was like that. <laughs> yeah, but it was good. It was good. They were enthusiastic. There's, there's a, there's a priest in Brazil. And by the way, we talk about the great Hispanic hope in America, for the church. It's a false hope. You want to know why? because the Hispanics are leaving the church up here and in Latin America. They, rec they, they say that if we do not turn the Catholic Church around in South America, there will be more, pro more and not Protestants, more Pentecostals in South America than Catholics by the year 2030. Now this started with Catholics being 90% of the population 20 years ago. And there are those who just say, well, just dig in deeper. No, there's a priest down there. I've forgotten his name. But he says, I've had it. So they have great music. They have great preaching. They pray for healing for people at their masses. And they have 20,000 people at every one of his masses on Sunday. And, of course, the arch conservatives are having a conniption. They're going, oh, that's not Catholic. That's entertainment. no. It's engaged, lively Catholicism. So who taught him how to do that? Well, the Pentecostals taught him how to do that. So the Pentecostals and the Charismatics, they have something to teach the Catholic Church. But our great gift, honestly, is apostolic succession, apostolic tradition, balance, and sacraments. We have that to give that you can't get at your Charismatic Church down the street. 
they have something to give that we've forgotten. And that's enthusiasm and engagement and some excitement about their faith. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I seem to remember one little wild man who had that kind of enthusiasm and excitement. You know what his name was? Francis of Assisi. He used to preach before the cardinals, and he gets so excited that he'd start dancing while he preached. Yeah. And he was, he, you know where we get our Christmas crib, don't you? Francis, from the crash at Greccio, he wanted to reenact the poverty of Jesus and of the Holy Family. So he went out into a stable in Greccio, and he brought in horses and, you know, donkeys and and lambs, and, and and they started to, they had mass there. And Francis, you know, he was he was ordained a deacon, even though he did, I don't think he did his six-year training. <laughs> they ordained him a deacon just so he could preach. That's all, and he, and he never received the, the clerical tonsure. He always wore the tonsure of a brother, because he didn't, he kind of considered himself a deacon just so that he could preach, but that's about all. So he was preaching, and he started getting so excited about Jesus in Bethlehem. And he was saying the word Bethlehem. And he was there with the sheep and the animals. And he started going, Bethlehem. 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 And he started bleeding like a sheep. He was bleeding in tongues. <laughs> That's wild. Can you imagine if Father John Keller began to bleat like a lamb at Christmas midnight mass? We would be scandalized, I tell you. I'll tell you, Cardinal Donardo would receive so many calls, he'd have him removed, bang, like that. If anybody could get away with it, Father John. Father John could get away with it. So here's my point. Enthusiasm. In theos. In theos. Enthusiasm in God. Theos is Greek for God. And in theos, enthusiasm, is just being in God. You don't want to be passionate and, and have your faith rise and fall just about how good you feel. I wake up some days and I feel downright crummy. Do you guys have that experience? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I wake up some days and I go, God, this would be a good day to die. <laughs> just, how about now? I mean, before I get up. I mean, we all have moments and days like that. So we can't rise and fall with our feelings or we'll be all over the map. But enthusiasm means that you have an active, engaged faith. 